Okay, so I guess we should start at the very beginning of this project, which I think your, your dad optioned the story, is that right? So That's right, yeah. how much did you know about it at the time when he was involved in it, and how did it kind of move from that to you being involved? I knew remarkably little about it. Um, <laughs> I knew little things. I knew that it involved a boy falling from a cliff. I knew it involved a, a, a dubious mother, um, and that was about it. And then I read the book, I guess it was in 2009 for the first time, and immediately got sort of filled with ideas of things. Um, I knew about this sort of fire in the book. The book has this huge element of a forest fire, um, which I knew my father had intended to sort of incorporate in, into the movie. And my instinct when I read the book was that that was sort of the first thing I wanted to get rid of. So that was, a, that was nice in the sense that from the outset, I felt like I was doing something probably quite different than he would, would have done with it. And it immediately felt like I could find a way to make this personal um, and throughout the process it became more and more so um, and l I think eventually sort of is a film sort of about my relationship with my father in some ways too um, so it was quite a therapeutic experience working on this project especially for such a long time because the script writing process was probably five or six years. Yeah, I was going to say it must it can't, can't, it must have made you feel more connected to him, which must have been a nice thing. So that, that you must have had that side of it too when you, you know, as you're working through it. Yeah, it was good. It was sort of some, some kind of connection. Yeah. And then, um, so this is your first. I think, um, correct me if I'm wrong. It's your first writing credit mm. on a film, isn't mm. it? Yeah. So, um, how did you kind of find that, and what what made you suddenly decide that you wanted to move into the writing side? It, it sort of happened by accident. I was brought I was brought on as a producer on the movie originally, and it was set up. Um, at a different studio and we were meeting writers we we're meeting a lot of writers and I st started sort of just uh, sketching out ideas more to collaborate with somebody um, from that standpoint and it was just over time that I got sort of more impatient with it um, and then not to be too boring um, but it, it the rights sort of disappeared for a second into the ether because Miramax was bought and sold and there was all sorts of politics involved. So there was quite a long period of time where I was working very hard on the script that potentially I had no claim to. Um, so I feel very sort of grateful that everything worked out in the way it did and we were able to get this movie made because there, there was a very realistic scenario where I would have wasted you know, three to four years of my life. Did it make you appreciate more from the acting side what goes into the, sc the screenwriting? Had you really thought about that side of it before? They're such different beasts. Um, I find, I, I have to say, I find, you know, behind the camera jobs to be quite fulfilling um, and sort of challenging in a way that acting isn't always. And so I, I've, I've really been enjoying sort of um, moving into sort of different aspects of filmmaking. And then what, at what point did, did any of the cars get connected with the story and how did that, did that affect any of the writing or did, did you change things when you, you became on board? How does that sort of work? I mean, we were, we were really blessed. I mean, I, I don't take this for granted that with my first script, essentially everybody who's in the movie is who I wanted to play each part. Um, you know, casting is a, it's an ensemble film. There's a lot of balance that's involved. Um, it's hard to imagine in most of these roles for me if not all of them, anybody else playing them. I mean, the fact that Sarah Gadden was 26 or 27 at the exact time that we were making this movie um, is some kind of miracle. And I really, I'm not sort of being facetious for myself, I don't know who else could play that part. It's such a specific vibe she has and look that she has and um, something inherently kind of nostalgic about her performance and it's hard to imagine another actress of that age and caliber who could emulate that. And what, did, um, did, you, did you have a writing background? Did you have, have you done any kind of formal training in writing? So did you, did you, was it harder than you anticipated? How, you know? It was really hard mostly because of, I think, how far away the script um, evolved from the original source material. And so, it, and, and the source material has unavoidable narrative elements that are quite elaborate and sometimes illogical so the challenge for me was really mostly about how much we could get away with um, and how much we could sort of shield the fantastical 
uh, elements of it in a way that felt digestible and, and easy to follow. I mean, that was sort of the biggest thing, was I want to make sure people were not confused, that they could absorb these quite abstract ideas and go along with them for the ride. Um, and that took just a lot of polishing. And then how about your um, collaboration with the director and how did, how did the two of you interact and how did that work? Uh, Alex is, I think this movie is a lot more personal weirdly to Alex than it is t to me um, and that was a big reason that I was so determined then to make it. Uh, we'd made a movie together, I'd, I'd acted in a movie that he was directing and I think probably subconsciously my motive for doing that film was that I had an inkling that he might be right for this. And uh, on set, I asked him a lot about what he wanted to do next. And um, I don't want to give away elements of our movie, but he basically described uh, various scenes from the script that I was writing. And I said, well, you should probably read this thing because it's you know, involved some of this stuff. And he read it and sort of had a very strong connection to it. And then the more I learned about him and his personal life, I realized that a lot of the things that were happening in the movie were things that he'd experienced personally. Um, and he just brought something so passionate to the film. And we, look, I, I, I'll, I'll be honest, I'm sure I'll say the same thing, we butted heads a lot. It was not a straightforward relationship. We were very tenacious with one another, but it was absolutely coming from a place of love um, and excitement about what we were working on. And I think that's probably just, uh, you know, I think we probably both thrive a little bit in conflict. And looking at the movie now, I can't imagine there's another director, selfishly, who would have, um, visualized the movie in a way that was so loyal to what was on the page. I mean, it's it's kind of shocking how 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 aligned those two pieces are. And then we can't really talk too much about the plot because I think, it, as you say, you don't want to give anything too much away. But what did you? What was it about the story or any particular characters that you really felt an affinity to? Or is, was what was the sort of your main excitement within the story? Um, so you're right. You're saying. No, no, no. Oh, yeah, yeah, sorry. <laughs> I, I, I just want to make sure I wasn't like, doing something really annoying all the time. I'm like, just tutting, uh, tutting under his breath. <laughs> um, sorry, the question was... So kind of, uh, without giving too much of the plot away, what, was there elements of the story that you really connected to or particular characters that you massively connected to? I think everybody, when you're like a writer, I think everybody becomes you. Like pretty much everybody is you. Um, or some shade of you. Um, I'm really fascinated by the power of beauty. Um, one of the things that was really uh, interesting to me at the time was that, that that whole case was happening, I'm gonna forget her name now, that very beautiful girl in Italy who was accused of being involved in a, in a sort of sex crime of some kind. And there was so much doubt about her innocence or guilt, and I think so much was that because of that was tied to her aesthetic. And so um, that was really, something that I've, I've fallen prey to in my own life. And I think beauty is a really kind of, I mean, Nick Raffins just made a whole movie about this. Um, but I think there was a lot of fun stuff to explore there. And then, and then also the notion of forgiveness and how um, our memory can become fictitious and all those lots of things that I thought were really compelling about it. Um, it's a rich, rich piece of material. I'm very grateful to Liz. And just the whole, this whole idea of being in a coma is something that I think everyone like think it's something you, at some point you all think about, and it's just like a terror. That is like well for me, it's like a terrifying thought to be in another person to be trapped in your own body. Body. Is yeah. it something? Is, is it something you thought about in that? I mean, no, I mean, I don't think any any writer is going to be excited about <laughs> writing a movie about somebody who's in a coma for the entire film. I mean, it's it's not it's not a great starting point, um, but sometimes. I think sometimes those restrictions are what allow you to kind of break free and, and be more imaginative. Um, so no, I, would, I wouldn't say the coma element was something that I was immediately excited about, but I liked, I liked what it kind of forced me to, th to think about, yeah. Yeah, no, I think, I think you're right. I think that, that it, it means you have to be more artistic because mm. you can't, as you say, someone sitting in a bed, lying in a bed is not It's not going to be gonna massively be compelling, yeah. yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And um, what was your thought? When did you first see the finished, like the finished movie, and how did you react compared to? I'm assuming that you were watch, watching all the way through anyway. But how did? You, what was your reaction to the final product? I don't know if you ever get that privilege. I mean, I, I was a producer on film. I was there every day, and you get you get so um, married to what's happening, and um, 
it's, it's become such an insular experience that I don't think you ever have the privilege of objectivity um, on a movie that you're working on to that degree. I just don't think that happens. And so I'm probably the worst critic of the film. Um, it's not until you start seeing a movie with an audience for the first time, I think you start testing the movie, that you're able to slightly kind of reposition your, you know, your perspective. And, um, and then it's sort of just the thrill that people understand what the fuck's happening and they can follow it. Yeah. And are you someone who like a perfectionist in, in terms of will you watch it and always find something that you wish had changed or done different, or can can you be like this is the best I no, <laughs> absolutely not. No, they're gonna tell you four exact things that I would like to change in the movie, and and I, it keeps me awake at night all the time for sure, for sure, for sure. I mean, don't let it keep you awake at night. I don't think I don't think you should watch it. No, it's just the way it is. <laughs> and then obviously you must have thought about how your dad would feel watching it as well. How did, is it was it quite an emotional experience in that way? Now it's completed because you're like this is a project that was started by my father mm. and I finished it. Is that is that sort of? I don't know. It's been I think because it's been such a long journey, honestly, um, that I think it's become its sort of own entity. Is that's the honest truth? And I, of course, I would be very curious to know. Um, what he would think of it, but I think it's also, it, for better or worse, it is it is deeply a, a reflection of kind of my own interest. I think at this point. And has it made you want to do more writing? Has it made you what? What's what? <laughs> I mean, I have done more writing. Um, it's it's a deeply lonely process, um, and I'm very very slow. I mean, I've written a couple of things since, and they've all taken me sort of equally long um, to get through. So that, that tells me it's probably not a natural skill for me. Um, but I really am enjoying doing, doing more stuff um, outside of acting and, and getting perhaps with a louder voice in the process. That, that I'm sort of thrilled to do more of. Do you have any aspirations director, as a director? Or? Um, yeah, I know I'm trying to do something next year. Yeah, I'd, I'd, love, to, I'd love to do more of that, for sure. And do you know what type of thing you'd be looking to do? Have you got like, ideas of... Yeah, no, we're gonna try, we're gonna try and make a film next year that I think is gonna be very kind of specific and very different to to Louis Drax and um, and uh, I'm very interested in music in film and I think that will be probably a big element to stuff that I do down the line if you know anyone um, is stupid enough to give me money then. And then just finally, when when will we see you on the screen next? What's your next project? Um, I'm about, uh, I, I just did a film with Ellen Page, uh, it's coming out called Into the Forest, um, which is actually really good, and so that's nice, it's nice to be something that's good, and uh, I'm about to start shooting a, a, a mini-series, um, which is an adaptation of this book called The Handmaid's Tale, um, which I wasn't sort of super familiar with before, but it's a really kind of fascinating book, and Elizabeth Moss is starring in that, and I think we'll begin next month or something, so that's going to be... A long but fascinating journey. Yeah, there seems to be a lot of hype about that. It's a lot, a lot of buzz already. Oh, it's good. It's good. It's a very. I didn't know anything about it um, until very recently. It's a very provocative uh, piece of material, and it's really dark, um, and sexually very sinister, which um, I, I I think is good. It's quite hard nowadays. I'm talking about this for too long now, but I think you know with with the prevalence of pornography to get people to want to watch sex on screen is quite difficult. It's not that exciting anymore. You know, I grew up in the 80s where every movie was sold on the possibility of nudity. And now I don't know how meaningful that is. But if sex is really perverse um, and, and there's something uncomfortable about it, I think there's more of a reason to, to, to look at it. Uh, for me, anyway, I think it's something you get more curious as to what it is. So yeah, I think yeah. people watch it. Which is why, like, Game of Thrones and things like that, people lock up. Yeah, and, 50, and, yeah and, and to promote my lead actor, Fifty Shades of Grey, as well, is something that I, I, I personally am still find very kind of compelling and interesting, and sort of it's amazing how that sort of grasped audiences in such a deep way when it's so specific, specific and fetishistic. And when I was a kid, it was paused the DVD on the, you know, the section, the one bit where there was nudity, and everyone would be. What? That, yeah. Did so. girls do that as well? Or they pause for the boobs as well? Well, not necessarily for the boobs. It'd be for like the kisses or the you know, oh, right, the right, little right, sexy right. bits. Oh, interesting. Huh. I'm being making myself sound so innocent now. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. It was lovely to talk to you. That was a very good question.